October 30th, 2015. This is Radio Tokyo. I'm Jonathan. With me, as always, because I can't seem to get rid of him, is Nick. And we have a super special guest, someone we've actually had on the show before. It's Lexi! Yay! Hi, Lexi. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad yourself. I'm doing okay. Hello, Lexi. We have missed you. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Missed you guys too. So it's almost Halloween. Yay? No? Scary? I don't know. What's going on? What are you guys doing? I well I'm doing the show right now. What what are you doing? I'm playing Hearthstone while I'm doing the show. And looking at the stream at the same time. Because I can multitask. I'm not as good, I'm just doing the show. Yeah, yeah. See, like, the important people are focusing on the show, Nick. Why the fuck are you even no, here if you're not going to focus? Because you guys want me to succeed at Hearthstone so that our followers will follow us because I can tell them about Hearthstone. And then, yeah. Why the hell do they need you to tell them about Hearthstone? Up as, wait, wait. I can dress up as a Hearthstone for Halloween next year and then yes. post that. So you're going to be a rock. This is, this is all part of a grand master plan. So you're going to be a rock with blue paint on it. Yes. And you guys are going to love it. I, I guess. I don't know. I'm looking like the, wouldn't you love that? I'm looking forward to it. See? Well see, uh speaking of things that are all dressed up, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but Diana already picked out her Halloween costume. And she's Harley Quinn. Which is actually convenient because uh I found out uh, earlier today that Harley Quinn is now the most searched for Halloween costume this year. She's become really, really popular. Like, even more popular I, than I've she has that. been in the past. I mean, it, it it makes me wonder why. I mean, it's 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 as if there's some new reason to possibly dress up as Harley Quinn. I just cannot possibly imagine what that could be, though. I'm gonna get some movie. Not, who the hell would go see a movie with Harley Quinn in it? Apparently a lot of people. Or very few people, who knows. Well see, th there was actually we'll a story this week, uh, speak, speaking of Suicide Squad. Uh, apparently, by the way, by the way, by the way, uh, those of you who are fans of us on Facebook, you probably have seen them. If you haven't seen them, you need to go look. Uh, but Empire Magazine put out their new issue, I think, yesterday? Yesterday or today? One of, the, one of the two days. And, um, there's multiple covers for it, so you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to buy every issue if you can find them. Uh, but there's one with uh, Will Smith is dead shot and, um, okay, actually, so I don't have to name actual actors and characters, I'll just name the characters. Uh, Deadshot, Enchantress, Harley Quinn, Joker, and I think there was supposed to be one more, but I haven't seen it. Uh, but it has a multi-page article in there about the movie, and apparently in there, Will Smith has said that Suicide Squad is actually a love story, and uh, well, it's hey. him, but it's it, it, it's Deadshot and Harley are apparently in love now. And what? Yeah. Uh apparently. Yeah, uh they've it, always I been an know. item in the suicide squad. I I guess I don't know. See uh, okay. Kinda uh, awkward considering the age difference, but Well see, like okay, here here's my thing. Um you know when Harley was first introduced, you know, she was with the Joker. And that's awesome. That's cool. You know, I'm fine with that. But now I think of as like New 52 or something like that. She's 
a lesbian and she's involved with Poison Ivy. So it's like, what version of yeah. continuity are you going with here? And how many partners does Harley Quinn have? It's not that I'm judging her. It's just like, damn, it's kind of hard to keep track of the people she's involved with at, at now. Because now it's like, well, there's going to be a love story here. Okay, well, is the Joker going to be like an Arkham? And and he's gonna, and, and is he going to get all pissed off and come after Deadshot and kill him or what? You know, cause, because it's apparently in this continuity, you know, Poison Ivy has not been introduced. So she's not involved with Poison Ivy, but she was involved with the Joker. And now is she like... I don't. It's 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 weird, and it makes the movie even more complicated to me. Well, I guess we just gotta remember, remember that the movies and comics are different, like with Marvel. Um, you also gotta keep in mind that Harley isn't necessarily a lesbian. She's just bisexual. She has always been very lean towards um, Poison Ivy. And she has had several other love interests throughout, uh, including Deadshot, and including a, in the new 52, she had a, a kind of a love interest with a uh, Coney Island sideshow performer, uh, dwarf character. Hmm. It should be interesting to see. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just, it, 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 it just... It, it makes the movie a little more complicated, you know what I mean? Like, you know, because because we know the basic storyline, you know, you know, like we've discussed, like, months and months ago, uh, is they're in prison, they're broken out, possibly broken out, I don't, we don't know if they're broken out or not, uh, but uh, they're released, and Amanda Waller puts them together as a team, and then they go out and they complete missions and everything. Now, exactly where the Joker plays into that, I'm not sure. Except, uh, no, oh, oh, no, wait, actually, I can tell you where he plays into it. Uh, there is a still shot floating around that I thought I posted the Facebook page. I don't guess I did. Uh, it's him, the Joker, sitting across the table from Harley, from, from, from Dr. Quinzel. So, like, you actually get to see her as Harleen Quinzel now. And, um, if you look at the, 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 like, the images, you know, like, where he's holding... What looks to be electrode and saying, I'm not going to kill you, I'm just going to hurt you. Uh, if you put all this shit together, what you're seeing is actually him breaking into Arkham, and that's her on the table. So I'm, I'm, I'm really convinced now, even more than I was months, months or so ago, that uh, the Joker is not a current thing. In like you know, I mean like it, at, at, as to the point in time that the Suicide Squad is created, I'm, I I don't think he's going to be like current. I think he's going to be. It's more of a backstory. Yeah, like I'm think that's where he's going to fit in because you know you see uh, her riding around with you know in in the car with him and Batman jumping on it. So I'm thinking that's going to be like a lead up type story because you you know uh, the scene uh, where you see Deadshot jumping off a roof that's actually the opening of the movie. As according, at least according to what the the the, uh, the Empire magazine article is going to say, because it was already released, you know, and it's already been read and everything, so everybody already knows what's in there. But apparently, that's what leads off the movie, and then you see him in Bel Rev, and then I guess they're just going to kind of shoehorn in the rest of the backstory as they introduce characters. I don't know. It's it, it it's it's strange, but who cares? I'm I, I'm still. It doesn't mean I'm less excited. About the movie than I have them. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense having it as the backstory. Yeah, definitely. If you've, if anyone has seen the uh, film of the animated series, animated uh, one, um, Assault on Arkham. It's uh, a Batman title cartoon, and the joke. Joker literally is already in Arkham, and they're breaking into Arkham to uh, retrieve information from the Riddler, who is also a former member of the Suicide Squad. See, what I... And you get to see the Joker in there, but this is way post-Harley Quinn working with him. See, I'm... I'm actually secretly hoping that uh, the Joker is actually 
who the Suicide Squad has to go after. Because I, I mean, I mean, like, okay, if you're going to complicate the story and say, well, well, there's a love triangle there. Uh, if one part of the triangle is removed, it's not a fucking triangle. And Will Smith said that the relationship between Harley and Deadshot and the Joker is a really distorted love triangle. So if the Joker is locked away, you know, and you can't get access to him anymore, then, again, there's no triangle there. It's not there. Unless, you know, she still has feelings for him, which we all know are completely unrequited at this point in time, but who, but who cares a shit? We're talking about, you know, like the here and now type thing. Uh, so I'm so I'm secretly hoping that uh, what ha what's going to happen is the Joker will be their target, you know, because we have no idea who they're going after. We know we know that the team is brought together to stop somebody, but we don't know who. So I'm secretly hoping that it's actually going to be the Joker, and then he's going to get really confusing towards Harley, you know, and try and twist her, and she'll turn against the team, and then they'll. You know, have like a societal breakdown. And then, of course, you know, you'll kill off characters no one gives a shit about seeing ever again. Headshot. And um, then they'll go from there and maybe, you know, you'll have like a bunch of bunch of villains that can be fought by Batman and Superman. And, and that's why you have to have the Justice League brought in because it, re it really does make sense. You know, to do something like that, you know, like, well, you know, they're suddenly good guys because, you know, we're going to blow them up if we don't, you know, which is kind of the, the story for Suicide Squad. But I think it makes sense uh, because, you know, they're all supposed to be bad guys. Why not give them a reason and why not make their, that reason be the Joker? Maybe. It'd be an interesting storyline. Um, they've neutralized a number of fellow villain targets in the targets in the uh, comic book series. So doing so against the Joker would make a lot of sense. My question really is, um, how similar is the DC movie verse going to be to the? Um, CW DC shows. Um, obviously, the you DC like... movie verse is going to be a lot darker, um, a lot more serious. But at the same time, how far are they going to deviate from it? Are they um, like it, it, it? It's kind of weird to me because it's like they almost have two continuities going at the same time at this point. Well, see, like, okay, not to completely change the subject, but to change the subject here, uh, speaking of the, you know, the, of the DC TV universe, uh, that makes me think of something that was announced today dealing with Gotham. Uh, they're adding a new character. I, d I don't know when they're going to add him in, uh, but Dr. Hugo Strange will be showing up, and there is evidently some controversy with the actor chosen to portray him. Now, if you have seen uh, Jurassic Park or uh, uh, Jurassic World uh, or uh, shit, what is that movie with Will Smith and Margot Robbie where they're criminals that just came out last year? It's a good movie. I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, he's in those movies. And, it, okay, it, most people know him from Jurassic Park. Uh, he's the crazy Asian scientist asshole who is responsible for creating an Indominus Rex in Jurassic World. Uh, B.D. Wong is his actual name, and that's causing some amount of controversy apparently, because Doctor Strange cannot be Asian. And, well, not to spoil this here, uh, but Gotham has, at least this season for sure, has already messed around with characters uh, you know, well, they, they, they did it the first season, you know, and, and, and we discussed it a little bit in a couple other episodes. Uh, but this season, they have kind of twisted around characters. Uh, Firefly was introduced, and it was a young woman who's 20, maybe 20 years old, you know. Uh, she's in there, and um, I, I, I'm not going to mention anyone else, you know, cause, because, it, because it might spoil it. But yeah, uh, an Asian man as Doctor Strange is—is is that the Wong 
choice to make. That was horrible, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, then fine. Oh Is that God, a strange choice for Doctor Strange? Did you... Okay, that was worse. You're cut off, and you just derailed us for like five minutes just to make that joke, didn't you? Yes, yes I did. That... I am ashamed to be on this show right now. I am, I am ashamed. No, I'm all for puns. I really am, but... Ugh. But no, uh, okay, okay, anyways, okay. Anyways, but... But... Uh, but oh, oh, to me... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh. To me, changing the racial, national, ethnic background of a character isn't a big deal to me unless it has an important impact on their backstory. For instance, if you were to make Black Panther white or Asian, that wouldn't make any sense, because he's the king of an African nation. There are white uh, people in Africa, though. Right? Yes, but traditionally the kings don't tend to be white Africans. Especially um, in a Central African country. Yeah. Actually, uh, actually, I think in the MCU right now, Wakanda is in South Africa, not Central, isn't it? Even still. You get the point. Um, I mean, like, like okay, changing um, uh, Johnny, Johnny Storm to black. That wasn't really a big deal, because him being white didn't really impact the story in any way, or his backstory in any way. They explained the thing with his sister by her being adopted. It was it was fine. I, I, I If people worry too much about preserving the ethnic or racial or national background, when it really doesn't impact the story that much, See, like, honestly, I'm 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 really not concerned with it because I happen to like BD Wall. He's good at playing someone who's kind of twisted. Like and, and that's why I mentioned the roles he's been in. I mean, if you look at what he's done in the past, he's good at it. Now he might not be, you know, the doc the Doctor Strange that most people imagine, but who gives a shit? Really, who gives a shit? Yeah. I mean, he's uh, uh, he he, he he's, it, 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 it's like Idris Elba as being James Bond. Why is that a bad thing? James Bond is, I mean, because you know we're it, it's probably most likely going to be a code name, you know. And I don't know why they don't just go ahead and come out and say that, you know, and that, that, that explains why they switch. Uh, the only way to explain the story and keep all the James character or James Bond characters in the continuity. Is to say it's just the code name for Agent 007. And that works. That's been a theory since the start of the books. Yeah. Because and that there's works. A, there's a huge time span between all of these films. Yeah, otherwise, uh, James Bond should be, what, an 80 year old man? Walking yeah. around with a king? Trying to spy? And, 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 and see, it's, it's not like they don't change people in comic book movies all the time. I mean, uh, Ra's al Ghul is supposed to be like Middle Eastern, but yet the most recent adaption of him was an Irishman playing him. And it was fine. It's Liam Neeson. Like, honestly, though, who's going to argue with Liam Neeson being in that movie? I mean, he, he was good. I actually liked him as Ra's al Ghul. That was probably... Honest, okay, honestly, uh, the, silly, the, only, silly. the only time where it's going to be a big deal is if the hero or villain is backstory is built around being from a certain culture or place. Um, like if they were supposed to be a descendant from the Night of the Round Table or a Nazi Germany villain or a Japanese samurai or something like that. That That's the only time where the racial or ethnic background really does become important to the character. 
I don't think it hurts, honestly. I mean, I mean, like I said, I like B.D. Wong, and I've liked what Gotham has done so far. And, and I know there's people out there who don't like it. Lexi! But I like Gotham. I have no problem with Gotham. I just question their choices of, say, butchering a perfectly good name just to make it slightly more obvious to a dumb audience. <laughs> Uh, in the example of the to be poison ivy being renamed Pepper, it's like really, is, is that necessary? It's just it's a it's an extreme dumb down and it's insulting to anyone who's read the comics. Well, see, I think a lot of what they're doing is essentially like an alternate universe, you know, like. Okay, for example, in 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 uh, just just the movies alone, I'm and I'm talking eighty nine forward. You know, you have um, what's still essentially called the Tim Burton movies, even though he was not part of uh Batman Forever and Batman Batman Returns. Uh, but it was it's still considered his movies. You know, like that's supposed to be the same Batman, even though there's three different actors portraying Batman. Uh, that, that and and that's why you had the same Alfred. Uh, the same Commissioner Gordon and a couple other characters in there are, are the same people. But that's, you know, one continuity. And then you get the Christopher Nolan ones, and it's entirely different actors portraying different roles, you know, and, and, and they keep their roles, except for, like, one character who was switched, uh, Rachel Dawes was switched, and that was it. Uh, but that works. Uh, because it's, di it's, it's, it's different versions, you know, and there's slightly different... Cha there's Okay. Take, take for example, uh, when uh, well, uh, um, they they mentioned just to, make a, just to make a point here, the DC universe to me is becoming as confusing as the Marvel universe, if not more confusing now, because the Marvel universe is connecting their TV shows with the movies, at least on a, they're, they're just acknowledging that they exist in the same time frame or timeline or whatever. In the DC universe, you've got uh, the Flash and Arrow and Supergirl and then I'm not really and sure... And Constantine. Yeah, and I'm not really sure if they're connected with like uh, Suicide Squad or Batman vs. Superman because I know for a fact that Barry Allen in the Flash is not going to be the Barry Allen that's in the Justice League movie. Uh, so I'm getting honestly confused now. Supergirl has actually explicitly stated to be part of it. Now I don't know if uh, Flash and Arrow will be. I they might be. I'm tempted to say they will be. Uh, but they could always, well, you know, we just... Know going, we know the characters are going to be in the Justice League movies, and they're going to get their own movies, but we... The TV show seems to be completely disconnected from them. Well, well see, that's the thing. Uh, Supergirl is stated to be, like, she's showing up just after the events of Man of Steel. So she's definitely part of it. Uh, now, I again, I don't know if um, uh, we're going to have that same thing with Arrow and Flash because they're actually in a separate part of the country. Uh, you know, like uh, Metropolis and Gotham is over on one end. So, it, so and, 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 and Arrow and Flash are in like Ohio or something. I forget where they're, they're supposed to be. Uh, but they're two separate spots. Now, they could tie them together and say, oh, hey, look at that. This is happening, whatever's happening, you know, and kind of tie them together to Lucy like that. But Supergirl is... I think she's in Metropolis? I don't remember. I didn't watch the show because I was watching Gotham. Uh, but she's a little close, like, like she's closer to where um, the other ma major characters are going to be. So, so it may just be that that, they, that they'll have an easier time of tying her in to uh, the the movies than the other characters, and you know, like for you know, well, as far as switching out the Flash goes, 
maybe they just won't use Barry Allen. Maybe they'll use another version of the Flash. No, you know, no, and, they, and 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 maybe they whenever they bring in, they're using, they're using, they're using, since they're using Barry Allen, then maybe yeah, it'll be him. A certain era of the Justice League. Maybe. I honestly well, doubt they would bring him out. They've explicitly said they're using Barry Allen, and it's not going to be the Barry Allen from the TV. He doesn't have the same kind of presence when it comes to full feature films. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a way to work him in. I, I don't know, but... You're, you're just trying to defend DC at this point. Of course I am. I like DC. Now, see, what I'm not going to defend is everything that happened on the GOP debate Wednesday. And now I know we're completely switching here, but I want to talk about it because you, you remember a while back we had Todd Jagger on, Nick? Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. My okay, mind. yeah. Okay. Uh, it, the, the reason I'm bringing it up is because there's an interesting thing uh, that CNBC did with the debate. And if, if if this had not been on my mind, this would not be part of the show, everybody. Uh, but their slogan for this was, your money, your vote. And the whole time, you know, like every time I saw that, I kept seeing, um, well, I, I kept thinking about, you know, having Todd on the show and Wolfpack and everything like that. And at some point, I don't remember when he did it, but during the debate, uh, Lawrence Lessig, a candidate who's running for president as a Democrat, uh, the one who's not allowed to debate any, for some reason, uh, actually tweeted a picture of uh, the thing, and he was like, really, CNBC? It's, it's really our money, our vote, and it's it's strange. So I wanted to get both of your thoughts on that before we actually get into Halloween topics, because this is supposed to be our Halloween show, and we have not yet discussed Halloween. No, I discussed Halloween. You guys haven't discussed Halloween. I started off the show with Halloween. Don't defend your actions, Nick. Um, I mean, he's got his points. I mean, I I, I really don't know what else to say beyond that. It's, I mean, obviously, big money is the media has been a very, very big part of that. It's a strange thing to have for a slogan, isn't it? A little bit. Lexi, what do you think about it? Because, you know, uh, Canada's had an election, what, last week, and apparently... Uh, you you now have the hottest first couple on the planet. Yeah, he comes from a long line of really hot-looking prime ministers. His dad, for his age, when he got into politics, uh, Pierre Elliott, he was gorgeous, very striking. He was considered, people said he would be a Bond if he wasn't in politics. I have honestly not kept up with who hot prime ministers are. I feel left out now. Justin Trudeau. Look him up. Hmm. Pierre Trudeau's son. He's also a huge comic... He's a, he's a huge geek, too. There's, like, multiple pictures of him running around comic cons and whatnot. Uh, I believe okay. even on his uh, personal Twitter and stuff, he posted a picture of him in on... Uh, Back to the Future Day in a DeLorean at a Comic-Con. He's the youngest one Canada's uh, ever had, isn't he? Uh, he's 43, I believe. I don't know if he, he's actually the youngest. I, I imagine he is. But, I mean, when it comes to American politics, which is what you're talking um, I have no idea. I stopped following it for the more part. I renounced my dual citizenship why. about five years ago, so I have no... Yeah, I was going to say that's probably a wise decision, Lucky. No, we had one younger. 
uh, 39. Hmm. Joe Clark in the late 70s. Anyway, since it is Halloween, how about we talk about some Halloween-related stuff, like um, The Great Pumpkin, please. Charlie Brown, which was on last night that I didn't watch again for the 30th year in a row? So many movie things to watch for Halloween. Your cut. How do you skip It's a Great Pumpkin? Seriously. I, I just do. I mean... You're I, a horrible I, person. I, I know, I, I know, I'm just... It's like watching Rudolph, you know, every year or uh, around Easter watching. Actually, no, they stopped showing uh, 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 Noah on ABC, so I stopped watching it. But then, again, that movie's like 18 hours long. And I like Charlton Heston. I just don't think I can spend that much watching him every year. You know what I mean? understand yeah I'm, I'm actually wondering uh when they're going to switch over easter programming and <laughs> instead of showing charlton heston as noah they're going to show christian bale <laughs> no <laughs> going to no, show that movie no no, no. <laughs> you mean you don't want you mean you mean or, you don't know? You, you mean you don't no. want to watch Exodus Gods no. and Kings on it on Easter? Your mouth. No. Actually, no, actually, you know, it, it, it. You know what? You know what? It it instead of doing Christian Bale, we'll have Jim Caviezel, and, and that way it'll actually be more Eastery. Hey. Like here, watch a movie and actually get to see as graphically as possible. What you're, what you're pretending is about bunnies and candy. Hey, what are you talking about? Traditionally, Easter for me, me being a, a pagan is is about the bunny. The bunny. You guys are the. It's the ones who who uh, participate in the Christian and Judeo Christian culture is the one that peg men to boards. I'm all about the bunny and the fertility and the chocolate. I don't know. Boards are fun. <laughs> See, not no, when you're nailed to them. It depends on what you're into. I've never actually been nailed to boards, so I, I don't yes. know. But, but real, but 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 honestly, like, I play but, hockey. But like, really, the 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 only thing I want to get into about this is, uh, at least as far as your religion goes, is uh, the best Easter sermon I ever heard back, you know, back when I was still religious. Um. This was years ago, by the way. Um, the best one I ever heard was a minister, and, and and this is the same one this guy delivered every year. But one year I just listened to it, you know, and it, and and I remember, you know, sitting in a, it it was actually at a reenactment, you know, and it just happened to be Easter weekend, like it was that it was that it was Easter morning, um, so so it was actually fitting to be you know to be there, uh, but we were in a barn. That was actually there when the battle took place 150 years ago, you know. And actually, this has been like 140 years because it was 10 years ago. So in, anyway, point being, um, he delivered his Easter sermon. And I remember people in the audience going, oh, oh, like that, you know, reacting to it. Because he was talking about what actually would have happened to Jesus. And I was like, yes, you're telling them about what a, a person's body goes through and like what would have actually killed him. You know, like it's like. Being nailed to it wouldn't, but, it, and, it, it, but, but when he talked about it, he was like, you know, they would use a spike that's about this long, and he held up his hands, you know, and it's like, everyone thinks it went through his hands, no, it would have been through the wrist, you know, and then they would have gone through his ankles, and, and it's like, he would have suffocated and died, it would have been horrible, and it's like, Jesus actually did suffer for all of you, and I want you all to keep that in mind, and everybody sitting there, just pale face, listening to him, because it's like, oh my god, you're supposed to talk about happy things, it's Easter! I I wish I had heard that actually. That that would be awesome. It's 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 easily the most Catholic sermon I've ever heard. And this guy was not even a Catholic. I I love Catholic sermons mainly because I'm Catholic, but you know, I'm all for the Catholic sermons. 
Anyway, but since it is Halloween, uh, let's <laughs> see. What do we want to... Oh, wait, I know, I know, I know. Because tomorrow, actually today, on Stars, I think it's today, there is a marathon of the Ash movies, you know, the Evil Dead movies. And then tomorrow, Ash vs. Evil Dead is starting up, and I... It, it's actually been a very long time since I've watched the movies, but I'm going to have to watch the series because it's it's Bruce Campbell, and he has a chainsaw, and the chainsaw flies, and, you know, who, who doesn't like that? Yeah. Yeah, I just watched them all recently. I watched Army of Darkness the other night, like last night or the night before. Because, yeah. And see, like, the strange thing for me is this is going to become, this, the, the series is going to start around the time that we have trick-or-treaters here, and I'm supposed to be passing out candy tomorrow, and I'm going to be in the house, be like, shut the fuck up, kids! I'm trying to watch this guy with the chainsaw head! What? He's killing zombies and stuff! You know, you should be home watching it! And, I, and I'll ruin it, and I'll piss a bunch of parents off because I'll be mean to their kids because I'm trying to watch TV at the same time. It should be interesting. Well, they've already been renewed for a new season, just based off on the pre, based off of the preview they had at uh, New York Comic Con. They they aired it, aired the first episode early for the people who attended that panel, and yeah, it apparently was such a resounding hit there that they uh, they renewed it outright for next season. Wow! It it doesn't it really doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's see like. You know, it, it, it used to be, uh, you like, you know, for cult classics, you went to movies and stuff like that. You know, like, for example, The Shining, which, you know, I really is popular around this time of the year because it's a horror movie. By the, by the way, The Shining is 35 this year, I think. 30, some of that. Yeah, 30. Is, 30. It, yep. is it just me, or are we still... There still haven't been a lot of great horror movies since the, the 80s. Like there really hasn't. To really, like, like when when I think of Halloween movies to watch, I still think of mostly eighty movies. That's because that's when it stopped. Like everything well, since then has been TV. Like I said, you know, like, like I mentioned, Ash vs. Evil Dead. I mean, that that that's an awesome show. You know, like why do you need to go see a two hour long movie when you can have six hour long episodes or whatever it is going to wind up being? Yeah, well, that's that's not exactly true. There's been a lot of really good movies since the 80s. Uh, it's just they n never get as big of a bump as some of the common favorites, such as, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and those have produced nothing but crap since the 80s. What about Nightmare Before Christmas? Well, that one, that one would be the one movie I would say is a classic, or has become a classic um, Halloween movie. But even that's starting to become old. Um, when was that what? released? In the 90s? Did, did 93, you just, I believe. Did, did yeah, you just even, say it's old? That, yeah. No, 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 no. You're, you're getting old, John. It's okay. Boys and girls of every age, let me tell you something strange. Come with us and you will see this our town of Halloween. That shit ain't old. That's that's awesome. That's like that's like kids today can watch that movie and enjoy it. Yeah, but it's still old. <laughs> and I mean, it, like, who does it, not? Yep, yeah, ninety three. And and honestly, it is now uh -oh. over twenty years old. So what? People that so are, are you? After that movie, are graduating college around now? You are older than twenty years yep. old. That makes you old too. So. Yeah, yeah, I am old. But of course, you know, Lexi is only eighteen or nineteen years old, so she doesn't know anything about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, Nick, not everything is old. Aha. You're still old. It, yes, I, I am old. I'm 33. Yes, quite old. I'm. Oh, hey, I'm Jesus's age. 
<laughs> and I have a beard. And I believe in healthcare, and I believe in being nice to people. And wow, maybe maybe I'm Jesus. No. Wow, that's 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 a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Not, well, I mean, it, it, see, like that's a, that's a thing that bothers me. You know, uh, is like if Jesus actually walked on Earth today, like assuming he's real, you know, people would be like, no. No, you're 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 not him. Like, how how would you know? It's like you believe this guy, but he you don't know. But, but yeah, like, wait, how do we go from night and for Christmas to? Oh, never mind. It has you Christmas in the title. It's you. It's you. It, do what? It, it, it's no, it's you. It's all you. You did it. It's no, all you. you 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 assumed the mantle of Jesus and then changed the subject. <laughs> Stop it. We're talking about Halloween. This is. Our time, this is the time of the witch and the pagan and all the ooky spooky. So stop it. Well, well I mean okay. well I mean we are talking okay. about Nightmare Before okay. Christmas, which has got Christmas in the title, so 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 Lexi. So so tell me yes. all about the fancy fancy pagan these things that I don't know about because I'm not pagan and I've been brought up in the Catholic household. And I'd like to know more about it. Well, technically, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty straightforward holiday. It is the season upon which the harvest has just happened, and everything is turning, and it is the turning of the season to winter. Thus, it becomes the season of the dead throughout the winter time, and that's basically what Halloween is celebrating. It's celebrating the dead coming to Earth, and all that it's it's not a terribly complicated holiday you don't need you know a whole bible verse to explain it it's still pretty cool um oh it is very much so are there any well i mean obviously things like dressing up are based on old pagan tradition um trick or treating things like that um is there anything you'd like to add to that? I, I, I know you know a lot about these kinds of things. Well, a lot of, pretty much all of Halloween. Halloween hasn't been really um, abducted by the Christian faith like Easter or Yule has. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty un, unmitigated, pretty much everything you see. Uh, Jack-o'-lanterns, trick-or-treating, costumes... Um, all of that revelry and stuff is all pretty much straight out of the tradition. Hmm. Cool. So, what is... Of all the Halloweens that you've had, what is your favorite um, Halloween... What's your favorite costume? Ooh, um, favorite costume? Yeah. That's a... That's a tough one. Tell us your favorite, uh, favorite costume. Well, about seven or eight years ago, I dressed up as the uh, voodoo spirit god of death, humor, and good party times. Uh, That's an impressive combination. Well, they... Long story short, voodoo tends to um, understand that death isn't the end of things, and death is actually something to be celebrated. So, yeah. thus, you know, enjoying yourself and having a good time and communing with your spirits and stuff is a particularly common thing. So, thus, you know, uh, that like god that. in that particular realm. Will... Uh, like they the dead for the, the Mexican holiday? The, the, yeah, uh, kind of. Um, uh, voodoo doesn't necessarily have a specific holiday for Halloween, um, as they they're basically uh, a very ancient Catholic thing, but or ancient um, African culture. But um, favorite costume? Yeah, I would have to go with him. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Um. 
Halloween experience? Anything you'd like to share? Juicy details? Uh, well, nothing party. I can share on air. Are you sure? I mean, <laughs> not sharing so. I don't know. I uh, probably shouldn't. <laughs> mm. I mean, hmm. I thought Jonathan had something to talk about for costumes, but he keeps getting distracted. Well, that's kind of what this thing is, really. It, 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 it's why I'm here. It's why you can't get rid of me. Mostly no. just so I can make talk actually, about things. Actually, I do have costumes I want to talk about, so fuck you. We'll talk about them. Well, you were talking to Lexi for a little bit. I didn't want to interrupt you. Well, now's your chance. Well, it's always been my chance, but yeah. First off, I want to lead off with what has to be one of the nicest costumes I've ever seen, and that is, of course, Lexi in Clown. Clown Lexi. And now she goes quiet. I have stunned her into silence, I think. I'm not exactly sure what to say. Well, I, I, you, you make an adorable I'm not exactly clown. Sure which picture? He, he's well, very fond of your clown clownliness. That, that, I think that's what he's trying to get across. You're an yeah. adorable clown. Not a. Hmm. Again, I'm not sure, sure what to say because I'm not exactly sure which picture you're going with. I could have sworn I told you. You told me it was the one where I looked adorable, and that was uh, uh, that's very every because you yeah. comment, comment on, on every, every picture. picture. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. You're adorable. So it just means you're adorable all the time. So how about instead of talking about you being adorable, we talk about like some bad Halloween costumes. Like, for example, the girl who dressed up as Nicki Minaj. Uh, yeah. Wait, which one of those? Because I've seen lots of those. It's it's some high school girl, and she is dressed up as Nicki Minaj. Like, she's, like, rail thin, but she has, like, a pillow tied to her ass and a leopard skin shirt. And it looks like she took brown shoe polish and just covered... Like her arms and her chest and her face, and then put on some red lipstick and a white why? wig. I don't understand why people find the need to do that. It's just so unnecessary. Yeah, especially considering her costuming partner for the event. He dressed up as Drake, but he did not, you know, he decided against doing blackface, which is kind of like. Wow. You don't Even this guy who kind of it's it's not necessary and it's it, 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 she it, did not I it, it it just annoys me. It it pisses me off because there's no reason to do it. You can still just put the costume on. See it's... like honestly I think you know blackface does have its time and its place, most of which was a hundred years ago. Uh, but, uh, I don't think it has I'm, any I mean, time I'm, well, well, no, I, I mean, like, okay, here's my thing. If you're going to do it, you know, do it constructively, you know, like, learn to do makeup to wear. I mean, like, th this shit, is, no, this, this no, looks no, like brown. No, it, it, no, no, hang on. Hang, 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 hang no, out, hang, no, hang no, out. No, 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 no. There is no, there is absolutely, there is literally no time it is appropriate. No. I'm, all. look, look, I'm not defending her doing it. I'm just saying, if, honestly, no, 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 I, I no, 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 no listen, right. listen, damn it, listen, there, listen. There, 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 I'm not, de I'm right. not defending her doing it. What I'm saying is <laughs> that if you're going to put makeup on, whether you're going to be a racist character or a clown or whatever, you know, learn, you know, to actually do makeup and not just, like, literally, it looks like she just grabbed shoe polish or chocolate syrup or whatever the fuck this is that she used and just, like, you can see the streaks. It looks bad. It looks really, really bad. I mean, it's it, it looks like she has 
Reeve Aligo, you know, to quote Uncle Ruckus from Boondocks, is what she fucking looks like. It looks bad. I mean, it's like you could you 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 can do makeup and do it a little better than this. I mean, like it's damn like th it, 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 you know removing the fact that you know she's a racist character completely from this. That is got to be the worst makeup job I've ever seen. Yeah, it's still indefensible. Barring the minstrel, it's it's it's. I'm offended on the fact that it's makeup and she did it so poorly. Uh, I mean, I'm offended for the blackface aspect as well, but, I mean, at the very least, if you're going to offend an entire culture, at least do the makeup half decently. I mean, you're a teenage girl. You should know a little bit by now. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and, and that's my thing. I mean, like, it, it's not that I'm saying, you know, go out and offend everybody for whatever reason, but like, god damn, if you're gonna do something, at least commit to it, you know, cause she know, oh shit, okay, she had to go to school dressed like this, and walk around all day, this is not, you know, like a five minute thing, but it looks like it's a five minute job, it looks like it's a five minute costume, you know, it's like, oh look, I'm gonna smear, you know, brown paint on me, and I'm gonna pretend to be a black person, and, and that's what it looks like, it looks like the, like the holy shit okay for an example of what blackface looks like when done properly with taking time and effort i hate to bring this up but robert downey jr in uh tropic thunder that looks good that really it looks good now it, it, it doesn't okay that but even but you know but here's the thing he's, he, he's portraying a character who's doing it to just to get a role you know so like when the context of the movie whatever, that's fine, I'm not going to defend it, but it looks good, you know, you can take the time, make effort to do that, and just, just like, what's her name, last year, who dressed up from the character from Orange is the New Black, no, it looks like you took shoe polish or something, and just kind of smeared your face, you know, at least do a better fucking makeup job. Nah, it's still indefensible. But yes, the dude with the dude beside her, even though he looks like a fucking douchebag, is at least not covered in chocolate syrup or cocoa Too powder much. or whatever the fuck it is she used. Yeah, the, and that's that's a big problem lately, and you can still find these. Makeup, makeup things on even in dollar stores and stuff. You don't find blackface anymore, but you still find uh, Asian makeup or Hispanic makeup or the like. It's kind of awful. Yeah, it's bad. It, yeah, just 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 be yourself. Be the white Drake. Be the white 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 Kanye West. Like, what, okay. Speaking of things that are apparently still in stores, what about the uh, the uh, chic nose that Walmart apparently was still selling? Which is like it, it it's like a it, it looks like a nose. You, okay, think of Burgess Meredith as the penguin and that fake nose he has. It looks like that and like this fake goatee, and then I guess it's a tablecloth on his head. And then, like, a piece of gold ribbon or something. And this is supposed to be a costume. And appar apparently, this costume has offended uh, the uh, um, American Council on, Is on Islamic Relations or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the group, I'm sorry. Uh, but apparently, it's offended them because it's, a, it's, a, it's an evil stereotype. And Walmart was like, it's a costume. Yeah, they... Uh... They really shit the bed on that one, cause that's I'm I'm looking at the picture right now, and yeah, that's there's no way around it. That's a that's an ethnic an ethnic insult. It's a, it's just it's just as bad as blackface because they've basically used a reductionist view, and it's like this is a Middle Eastern person.
that was actually taken off the shelves at the same time that the uh, uh, the kid in what I guess is supposed to be an IDF uniform was taken. Now, this was taken down for entirely different reasons. Uh, apparently, uh, this one was a threat to Muslims rather than making fun of them. Because he's sitting here in a... It, the, the costume is like, okay, it, it's a red beret, you know, and then he has like this olive drab suit and then a and then like an and then a, and a toy uzi and then there's what looks to be uh is like hebrew words over one pocket and this was thought to be a threat or an insult to islam so this was taken down and this is of course caused controversy for a whole other reason yeah i'm looking at that and that's that's not like you just no um the n unnecessary adding of um i don't know if it's real um hebrew or, or arabic text uh but i mean it's unnecessary addition to it it's um very striking in resemblance to that particular uniform and outfit of that group there's no two ways about it. They're directly referencing that. Now see, like I think if you took the writing off, it, you know, and and took the emblem off the little uh, beret thingy, it's it's perfectly fine. I mean, that's that that's my really the only thing I can think of that you could do, you know, to make it you know better. I mean, it, 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 now well, again, that's a very it's, standard it's, uniform. It it actually is. I mean, it's like, but why specifically? But, uh, but like, why specifically like make one? Denomination of it. What, what? Why specifically make one for the idea? Like that's strange. But see, but see, but see, see. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I I really don't think this is meant to be an attack on Islam. I really don't. I think it's someone trying to make a costume. And trying to make something that they think someone's going to buy because you know there's some, there's there's, there's got to be someone out there who wants to dress their kid up like this like so like what really the harm in doing Why? this you know what I mean? Why should a kid dress up like that? Dress him up as Thor. Dress him up as a ghost. Dress him up as Frankenstein. Any anything marched you into a political state. I don't, I don't know, but There's I mean, no like, I mean, point. like, okay, see, adult, adult costumes different, but see, okay, see, like, I'm looking at it. Well, okay, here's the, the thing. I, uh, when I you know, years ago, I was friends with someone who was from Israel, and uh, before she turned 18, uh, her family moved to the United States specifically so that she did not have to join the idea, because when you, when, because when you turn 18, you have to join for two years. Like, it's, it's, it's law. And, you know, like, thinking about that, it's like, you know, I can understand, you know, why she wouldn't want to dress a kid up like that. But, you know, but what if someone did? Like, but, I mean, like, it's, it's you know, well, my kid wants to be a soldier. Okay, I'll just grab a costume. Let's say they just grab that one, actually. I mean, like, it, 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 it gives you, like, a, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's weird, and it complicates things. But, I mean, like, kids want to be soldiers sometimes. Let them be soldiers, but like my 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 real concern is seriously why specifically the idea like why them over I don't know the Green Berets or the Army Rangers or a, a Mountie or anything else. Any number of generic military uniforms, like as I said, take the emblem and the text off of that, and it is literally a number of generic military uniform added on it becomes a very specific thing let's go from there to uh anorexia and i I'm, I'm not i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the costume um for those of you who aren't aware of this this is another one that's caused some controversy um uh, not because it's a full-figured woman, and you know, and, and by full-figure I mean like she's, you know, she's 
big tits, big ass. I'll I'll just put it bluntly. Uh, you know, very nice hourglass figure. Uh, but you know, she's wearing a skeleton costume and she's holding a tape measure around her waist and it looks like it's tightened. And it's called anorexia, and it's causing controversy because why wouldn't it cause controversy is really my question. Uh, yeah, that's, uh... Hmm. Not sure how to start on into this. Well, see, uh, like, two-thirds of people who have anorexia wind up dying, and there are some people who have commented on this and said that they think the most offensive part of it is actually to already dead people. And, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's one of those costumes that, you know, I don't really see the harm in if you remove certain things like the tape measure from this. You know, she could just be like a skeleton nurse, but then she didn't have any legs. You know, so, like, where's the harm in that? But when you have the tape measure and you give it the name, which is trying to be funny, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little strange to me. It's, it's, it's like the idea of costume. I think people are trying to be way too clever with Halloween sometimes. And they're trying to make political statements that they are getting completely wrong. I mean, yes, to some degree, you could look at it as this is a tribute to uh, the people who've died because of eating disorders, but a Halloween costume isn't the place to make that. It just comes off as an offensive joke. Well, see, like, okay, if it's going to be a tribute to people who've died, yeah, that's, that's kind of nice, but why does she have the fucking tape measure? It's like, oh, look at me. I'm so thin, I'm thin and clearly beautiful. It's amazing. No, no, it's it's it, it's strange. I mean, like, remove the tape measure, and she's good. It's like just a skeleton nurse, because what it looks like to me. Just like the idea of kid remove the Hebrew writing and the emblem on the, on the thing, and it's good. Yeah, it's just... People Take, are you know, doing so much unnecessary stuff with their Halloween costumes. Just make it simple. Be a zombie. Be a skeleton. Be be creative if you want, but you gotta think long and hard sometimes to come up with something this offensive. It's like, like you go out of your way to stir the pot. Uh, being creative makes me think. Okay, actually, okay, back up a second. Earlier this week, I reached out to everyone who likes Radio Tokyo, and I said, you know, if you're gonna dress up, you know, send, so, you know, send us a picture. And we'll have you on the show. Uh, several people actually did. A lot of people did. Uh, a, a, a couple of people that I know who costume, you know, like they go to convention and everything, you know, they sent me pictures too. Uh, but, you know, making up costumes, like the first one we have right here, this is this is a girl I went to school with. Uh, she's, they were originally going to be the Adams family, uh, but they could not get Morticia, the Morticia costume to work for, the, for her, the mom. And they could not get the sun to be pugly. Like, it, it, it didn't work. So they switched it. Uh, she's now a vampire. Uh, her daughter is still Wednesday Adams, but she's like a punk rock type gothy type thing. You know, where she, it's just not the dress. You know, she has, you know, on pants, you know, but it, it, she's, she's supposed to be Wednesday Adams. And then her son, I think, is supposed to be Macklemore, I think. I don't know. I, I, I'd have to go ask her. But see, like, none of this is really offensive. Like, it's it's cute costumes, and it looks good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean... It's just... Simplicity is the best thing, really. There's... I mean, you, you can be creative in your simplicity. And the, uh, we had someone else send these in. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if this is viewers or pictures people dressed up in costume that they saw. I'm not sure, uh, but it looks like we have like an evil clown, and then I think it's a skull with blood on it, and then I don't know what the hipster with the bloody hand is supposed to be, but 
it, it, it's 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 neat it's neat costumes. I mean, it's people who actually put a little bit of thought into what they wanted to be and didn't just be like, I want to be the most offensive thing ever. You know, you know, evil clowns and vampires stuff are typically you know generic things for Halloween. You know, for people who go out and trick or treat, and 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 that's fine. It didn't hurt anything. I'm like, but like, why is there a need to make a purposely offensive costumes when you can do stuff like? I, I feel like people are just they they want their fifteen minutes of fame. I, I I really do. I think that's all this is at this point. They want their fifteen minutes of they're fame. They're trying. They're trying to do what happens. They're trying to be offensive and they're trying to be they're trying to be witty and trendy and it's just ending up really badly. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, like like, like the, the girl, girl who the girl who dressed up. Minaj, she is suffering greatly for this faux pas. She has, I believe, the uh, one university in Florida she was applying to has actually said out and out, uh, we're really going to have to review this whole situation for you because, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not on board with people doing this and attending our university. She may lose, she may lose out on a post-secondary because of this idiocy. Ah, okay, well, uh, talking about something that, you know, that's fun and, uh, whatever, uh, one of our, uh, listeners, uh, is a member of the furry community, so she sent me a picture of her in her fursuit, and she's, okay, she's fairly open about it, and, uh, for the longest time, she was actually going to work on Fridays in her fursuit, she was able to get permission from her job to dress up and, you know, at one day a week, you know, walk around in costume and it, it actually wound up getting them more business. You know, and I know a lot of people, you know, look at the furry community and they're like, oh my God, what's wrong with those people? You know, but, you know, it, it got her, it got the store she worked at more business and it wasn't offensive. It wasn't strange. It wasn't weird. So like, why is there a need, you know, to make fucked up costumes for, you know, for Halloween? You know, and then, like, uh, this one is, this is actually professional. What, what we're showing right now is a professionally done photograph of someone else who's also another listener uh, who goes uh, to conventions and everything, and she dresses up. And she she made this by herself. She did not, you know, buy anything you're seeing off the rack. Hello? You still there? Yeah, I'm here. No, I'm still there. I'm just okay. looking. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just, got, you just got quiet. I'm sorry. It's fine. We're, we're just looking at the costumes. We're trying to think of what we should be. Let's see, I already um, know what I'm being. I, uh, I have no idea what I want to be. Just to show off something that you can get out directly off the rack. A an, another another one of our listeners dressed her kid up as a ninja. He's a ninja master, and, you know. And she sent me pictures like it, it, she sent she sent it to me uh, right before we decided, you know, before we started going on the air. And uh, I didn't get a chance to get them ready. Uh, but his, I think he's in kindergarten. Don't kill me. Uh, but um, his whole class dressed up, so they're you know, so they're walking around a parade and everything, and. There's some really cute costumes. There's some really good ones. And then I got sent this one right here. This is not from this year. This is actually last year. This is one of our users' sons, uh, whose name is Joey. Hi, Joey. Uh, Joey is, of course, Mr. T. And it looks good. It looks really good. I think that's probably one of the cutest costumes I've ever seen on a kid. Re I really do. I think it's hard to beat a Mr. T costume.
apparently I had my mic muted. I'm sorry about that. All I was going to say is it's probably one of the cutest costumes I've ever seen. And really all they had to do was, you know, shave the mohawk in his hair, draw the beard on him, and then he went to the store and got some plastic chain and spray painted it gold. And it's cute. It works. It's 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 a good costume. Uh, it's not like... It, 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 it's not super expensive, you know, and there's some really good ideas out there. Uh, another one of our listeners actually made this for her son. He's a spider, you know, and she's got wire attached to his arms. So whenever he raises his actual arms, it raises the spider arms. Now, of course, you can't see the back in this, but he's got a big abdomen and everything. He's got little eyes and it's really good work. Uh, but she also made for herself because she and her husband are going to a party she made a witch blade costume now this is not you know like full on armor for the witch blade it's glove shoulder chest uh uh no that, that waist. I used to read witch blade this is this is basically what she wore yeah it's 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 oh, like well, when she wasn't going completely berserk yeah, and it looks good. Uh, she, she actually sent me a couple of them. Hang on a second. Let me get the other one up here so you can see it. But it, it's good. It really looks good. And what she made it out of was, well, I mean, obviously the bra is a bra. You know, so that, that, that's there. The jean shorts are jean shorts. But everything else, well, except, for, except for the actual glove, but everything you see that looks like it's metal on her, that's actually hot glue. She sat there and she hot glued everything. And then put the little jewel in there and spray painted it a couple times, you know, and it looks good. It makes a fantastic looking costume. It really does. It's brilliant. And I think it was a good idea. I mean, uh, she did this in between making the spider costume for her son. I mean, that's that, that that's some damn talent to make costumes there. Uh, but the last one I want to show is because I promised... I promised I would show this off. Uh, this is my Scarecrow costume. This is not, you know, like the shirt and pants I'm going to have on, but this is the mask and the glove. Um, I've actually changed uh, the green wire thing on there on the front. It's now a tube that's supposed to glow in the dark, but I, it's probably not going to because reasons. Uh, but that's got glow-in-the-dark paint on all the fingers. Uh, the main thing in there with the light where you see it that actually lights up i'm gonna have some extra some extra things on me that glow and that is made out of a fry box like what's on my hand is a fry box and then some uh buterol containers that i had lying around and tape that's really all it is and some paint and of course you know the burlap mask but but that's my scarecrow costume so the world's getting to see it for the first time. It looks really good. Thank you. Did you. a really good job with what you had too. Very nice. I mean, like I could have, you know, made it a lot more extravagant, but I mean, I it, the the one I made last year was just it, it it looked sort of like a lucha mask. It fit really tight to my face, you know, and it it looked good and it scared the shit out of little kids. But this one, you know, this year I wanted to go for like a more hood-like thing. And instead of having, you know, like the face mask and then the hat, I wanted to have an actual hood. And what I'm going to do is take like an old, uh, old worn-out, tore-up flannel, like red flannel shirt, you know, put that on, have a pair of overalls on, you know, and then, you know, put the hood on and look like a look, look like look like I'm actually a scarecrow, like like a made-up scarecrow, you know. And then just have the glove on top of that. And I I think it's going to be good. I really do. I think I'm going to scare some kids, and I'm going to have a good time tomorrow night. Just, just, just don't scare them too bad. Also, see, to answer you know whoever Revab97 is, I believe that, yes, each of us has had a girlfriend, and we do have friends. I, I just noticed that. Yeah. See, see, here's the funny thing. We're all friends. Like, we're friends with one another. That's why we're on the show together. Maybe you would like to be our friend, and you could be on the show, too, one day. And then you can have a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you can be our friend. You can be our friend. We can talk about 
strange and amazing things, you know, like my scarecrow quest. See, like, what, what I want to do is, going back to costume for a second, what I want to do is work on it and make it look a lot better and then go to, like, a convention or something like that and not win prizes, but... You want, you, you're you totally trying to win the prize. It's okay. It's okay, John. I, I, I think it would be cool, because, I mean, it fucking lights up. Like, this Every, is... Everyone, everyone can dream. Everyone can dream. Well, see, like, as, as far as cosplay goes, I've never really done anything. Like, I mean, you know, I made the mask, la the mask last year, and that was about it. But this year, I was like, you know what? I've got, like, a month and a half. I'm going to actually do something constructive and make it look good. I mean, the, the mask looks like shit. I really does. But that's because I kind of wanted it to. So, at a, like, the only thing I did other than, like, the initial day or so of working on it was to take the black string and sew it on there. But that's about it. But, like, the you know, like, I wanted it to look simple. I wanted it to look like it was done, you know, by someone who didn't really give a shit. And, and it kind of looks like that. But, like, the the glove thing, I wanted that to look a lot better. And it's got me really interested in actually making things, trying to go to conventions and, you know, be more geeky than I already am. Which is part of the fun of making costumes. The, uh, the more you make them, the more you want to try to make them better. Pretty much, but yeah, I think uh, we're I over our. Lexi. Did we? Apparently, we lost Lexi. Oh no, we did. Lexi. We did. Damn it! I'm sad. Oh well, we're we're about an hour and a half now, aren't we? I think. Let me check. Something. It's been a while. Hour and fifteen minutes, so we're 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 a little over our hour or time we aim for for an hour. I suppose we should end the show then. Maybe. Yeah, I think so because you know. We, we try to aim for an hour, so we're hour and 15, so we're, we're, we're not too far over. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Um, right, this is Jonathan from Radio Tokyo again uh, with a, another edited in ending. Apparently, uh, there is a problem when we stream. I haven't figured it out exactly yet, uh, but I will sooner or later. Uh, but it cut off us saying goodbye. Now, uh, Lexi was gone, and uh, she actually came back for the initial goodbye, but this is just me again here. So, uh, I wanted to thank all of you for listening. Uh, I wanted to thank Lexi for being on our show. I wanted to thank Nick for being on our show, which I know is unusual. You know, if you've listened to our shows in the past, I never thank him for being around. Uh, but thank you for being on the show, Nick. Um, we had a good time tonight talking about Halloween. I hope all of you enjoyed our show. Uh, we will talk to you on Monday. Uh, please have a very safe, very happy Halloween. Please remember to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Uh, like us on Facebook, leave us a message, and if you did not see your costume in the video uh, today, uh, feel free to send us one, because we would love to see it, and we'll probably, and, and we hope to possibly have a video of some point in time of all the costume submissions that we got, because there was a lot of, a lot of ones that did not make it in to uh, our show today, just for time's sake. But again, thank you for, you know, listening. Uh, we'll talk to all of you soon. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.